little cold start this morning. It's cold, but I got short sleeves on, so I guess just dummy me. No, really, it's, it's 44 degrees, but it's uh, it's a tolerable 44 degrees. So uh, as you can see, we have, well, there's our trailer right there. But we are not putting it right there anytime soon. Maybe I say that. But, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, if we're not going to hook up to that one, we're fixing to go hook up to another one. So I'll let y'all be the guess, uh, let y'all guess and figure out which one we're going to hook to now. All right. So stay tuned. All right. So we is a rainy, rainy day here in Lithonia, Georgia, but here's what we did. We done messed around and bought us a new hopper. I told you I was gonna do it. I had to spend some money. But uh, yeah, I got uh, found this thing on Facebook the other day and uh, it's pretty clean. We gotta do something about that. Uh, but uh, it is a, it's a 17 model and it is, it's super, super clean. So uh, here it is, the new trailer. Once again, we got a new trailer so we are uh we're about to jump in here and uh go load and start heading uh heading towards the house we got a not a real busy week this week because uh it's already tuesday i couldn't pick this thing up till today so We're not gonna probably not and next week's thanksgiving so we're gonna have two short weeks but uh i hope i hope it works out like i planned it or like i'm planning it to be where uh we're gonna have a we're gonna have a dang good week next week even though it's a short week so anyway stay tuned we're gonna ride on i got to go uh like i said i just picked this thing up and i am going to go get something to eat become starving need food and I need coffee so here we go all right you guys looking for something good to eat come on down here to maybe there we go old Rudy's barbecue right there right here at 201 exit 201 Jackson Georgia on 75 my goodness good this brisket is good it is the smoke flavor is there like i like it the baked beans are pretty good fries are fries are okay well uh, barbecue sauce is is on point i like i like this barbecue sauce so man old rudy's right here at jackson georgia exit 201 75 i 75 man they're over here on the uh, west side of the interstate right over here across from the speed co and the flying j whoo I will be stopping here again. Sixteen dollars to take a shower in this dinky little thing. Couldn't cuss a cat without getting a mouthful of hair in here. I don't know what the world would think about this.
Alright, so we're going to pull up on the scale here. And... It looks like he's going to write all this down for me. Uh, 11, 640. 640. And pull up here a little bit more. We're going to go... 41,700. 41,700. 41,700. And we are 70,420. All right, so we got to do some math to figure this out. It looks like he's figuring it out for me over here, so. Alright, so I'm going to tell y'all something that you don't find at a lot of places. And this is, this is a great place. Uh, anywhere that will put this much detail work into your axle weight. So what I was doing, I was when I pulled up on the scale, I was weighing each individual axle. And uh, the way you do that is you put your steers on, a, on the scale. And that was the first number I wrote down. So... Then you put your whole truck on there. And to get your drives, you subtract your steer from the whole tractor weight. And that will give you your drives. And so once you pull your whole truck on there, you can subtract your uh, your tractor weight from your trailer weight and get, uh, or from your gross weight and get your trailer weight. So, uh, and he actually wanted me to pull up and uh, he actually wanted me to pull up and actually get the the trailer weight itself but yeah he he's over here uh he's over i see him right now he's over here figuring exactly uh exactly what uh, what he's gonna put on there to get my weight right so man this is uh this is a good place to go to here i like this so we're gonna pull up under here and finish it you know it, it's kind of not really aggravating uh you got to pull around this thing twice for him to get you right but i would rather pull around twice and get it right than to uh be guessing so i actually like this so here's these hoppers let me show you this okay so we're gonna pull up under here and load and uh he stands on this little catwalk over here he's over there figuring my stuff right now so all right i gotta pay attention Alright, round two. Let's pull up on the scale, see what we got here. It looks like he's gonna write everything down, so I'm not even going to do none of this. So we'll just see what he says here. We're gonna pull up on here real quick. Got the steers on there. And it's eleven nine. Or eleven six twenty. Alright, let's see what we got here. Alright, looks like we're sitting at 45,320. 45,180. That's going to put us right on the money on 34,000 on the drives. Get a gross weight here. Ah. There we go. 78,480. Or 78,500. Mm, I don't know if he. I don't know. We'll see. Let me see what he says here. If he wants to put some more on there or what he wants to do. Boy, this guy has got a stainless steel Tempty hopper. And by golly, that's what I was wanting when I bought a hopper. But the only one I could find was extremely expensive. I couldn't afford that hauling this cheap freight. So uh, I didn't get it. But man, that trailer, I bet you that thing cleans up. It'd be shining like a diamond in a goat's. You know what so i'm gonna jump out and get my paperwork real quick and uh, we're gonna be riding on to uh riding on to arkansas
All right, y'all. We are at the, uh, we're at the polish shop here, but there ain't nobody polishing, so. Now, we stopped in here. I always kind of just park here a little bit and run over and take a shower over there sometimes at the pilot when I need to, but we have got to do something about this when we get home. I just can't ride around. I mean, like, it's killing me. I, I run out of time this weekend, but I've had full intentions of cutting me some, uh, cut me some new cow mat, put some weights on it. It take all that mess off, but ever since I bought the trailer, I bought it, you know, it's raining. And I didn't really get a chance to do anything, but, uh, but hook up and, and check everything out and go, cause it was, it was raining. So, uh, and loaded this morning and it don't look like I'm gonna have time to do anything till I get home anyway. So I'm just gonna have to ride, ride around with uh, Kenworth mud flap. So uh, we're fixing to finish getting uh, the last little leg of this trip. We got still got a couple hundred miles to go and uh, it's getting colder, colder, colder. It's like gonna be like 29 tonight. So ugh, I'm not looking forward to it, but hey, it's gotta be winter sometime, I guess. So. We're fixing to ride on, go, uh, go out here and maybe get hooked up with a cow wagon called Cross I-20. Uh, I done got hooked up one, with one earlier. We was going uh, across Highway 80 in Alabama. And we kind of rode on through there pretty good, you know. Made good time, so. Maybe, uh, maybe we can find something like that across here tonight, so. Uh, probably see you guys in the morning or later on tonight. Good morning. We are absolutely third truck in line. That one's first. That one behind that shed is second. And we are third. We're going to this little feed mill here. I think it makes cow feed, but uh, we're going to be here a minute. He said it's going to take about an hour and a half a truck. So that's uh, four and a half hours hour and a half three and me will be four and a half so it's eight o'clock it'll be after 12 before i load unload so uh man anybody that really wants to get into this is absolutely insane just letting y'all know uh, on the front end do not do this this is not fun this is not But y'all enjoy it, so we're going to do it. So, all right. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to look for another trailer to buy because next week I'm probably going to be doing something else. So, uh, I'll catch up with y'all when I unload here. Now, all right, so I'm into it here. And uh, this guy right here in this truck, he was over there unloading. And they made him stop unloading back across the scales across the street over here so they could load one of their feed trucks so uh, we're an hour into this deal and that guy's not even unloaded and look at the mess on the top i don't know if he's got these peanut hole pellets i've got but if he does that's what my truck's gonna look like here in just a little bit so this is probably gonna be a lunchtime lunchtime deal is not looking like it's going to be very fun here today so uh i know like when i get in these situations like this where you know detention may be an issue and you know i don't like any any gray area so usually what i do is uh hit screen record on my iphone that way and go to video that way it will show a time on my video and then i verify the time on my ipad there so that way there's no issue there is no if ands or buts i video where i'm at livestock nutrition center so there is no no issue about getting paid on detention you know and if you want to shortchange me on detention then uh you know 
I have every right to call you every name in the book. No, I'm just kidding. I ain't going to do that. But yeah, I will, you know, I will raise Cain because I, I'm 100% justified when, you know, I've documented everything. So it's one thing about it. You got to document, uh, I, I've, I've kind of, you know, I've, I've called like when I'm hauling for somebody or whatever, I'll call and say, Hey, I'm here. You know, there's 10 trucks waiting here and it looks like it's going to be five or six hours. And then, you know, uh, whoever's paying the t detention, not the broker or whatever. I mean, like, yeah, they, they, uh, they come back, want some proof and that's kind of, kind of, you can get burnt like that, you know, just calling somebody and not unless, uh, I mean, when you got video proof, I mean, that's the self, this iPhone, uh, smartphone, whatever, has just been a game changer in so many ways. And that's one way that, uh, that you can cover your assets. All right. We're going to chill out for a little bit. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you can, I know this town ain't got Uber Eats or nothing like that. So, uh, we'll probably just have to snack on whatever's in the truck here. So. We're going to wait it out. See you in a little bit. All right. So there's the, uh, there's the feed truck. They just got through loading. So this guy is probably fixing to go back across and finish dumping. Maybe, I don't know how much longer it's going to take for him. I don't know. Surely he's bound to be close. He was back there for probably 45 minutes. So. You know, it just depends on how many of their trucks come in as to how long this is going to take. I mean, the guy said it'd take an hour and a half, something like that, hour to an hour and a half. And, like, that dude's back here like 45, 50 minutes. And, yeah, not unloaded yet. So uh, I have a feeling this is probably like a small auger that's feeding all this going up in these legs and, and going to the bin. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's probably... Uh, I mean, just looking at this place, it's old, you know, and old places like this take the longest to unload. So, but even some of the new places, man, you get some of these big super feed mills and you get there and there's, uh, 30 trucks waiting to unload corn and you got to get in line, uh, get in line there. Hell, you're liable to sit five hours there. I know guys and you go to Tyson, you ain't getting paid attention. Now you might as well hang that up. Tyson ain't paying no attention on corn anyway I, they might own commodities or somebody somebody might pay attention somewhere but i don't think tyson gonna pay attention on nothing so word of advice there all right hour and a half into this and their trucks just keep piling in here so uh i guess we're just still gonna keep waiting fun times All right, so here's the setup here. We're unloading. This guy is unloading me here. I'm not even going to get out in this mess. Oh, uh, but they load their feed trucks up under this, uh, up under this pit too, right there. Out of those overheads. So we've got to, if, if one of their feed trucks comes in here to load, they're going to want us to pull off the scale and go over there across the street. And that dumbass right there parked right in the right in the way. He's he's getting set to unload next, of course. But you know, I mean, if I've got to pull across and jump across the same two or three times like the first truck did, uh, you know, that's gonna be a pain pain in my ass right there. So we'll uh, we'll see. Hopefully, they won't have no feed trucks come in. But there ain't been no feed trucks come in here in a minute. So I have a feeling they're fixing to start pouring in. And I'm gonna have to drive across there. And since he's sitting right dead in front of the scale, I'm going to have to go to the right or left of him. And when I get ready to back over across the street, back across the scale, back to this pit, I'm going to have to do it all at an angle right there. So, uh, looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, no dumping. Don't be, don't be dumping. Don't be dumping your hopper right here. And we're not, we're pulling up over here gonna get uh what's up homie gonna get her trailer washed out load we're fixing to pick up it requires a washout even though they didn't ask for my washout ticket last time i was down there you just don't 
ever take a chance with this because like if you don't get washed out it may be 50 or 100 miles to the next washout so and you always when you unload if you gotta have a washout you always try and get the washout that's closest to where you unload and i'll tell you why because a lot of these places these truck washes especially after covid you know after covid people just don't want to work no more let's just face it and uh it was, that realize they don't have to, you know, and, or don't want, you know, ain't nobody gonna do nothing. I mean, like, you can't find nobody to replace my sorry ass, so, you know, you got to, you got to put up with my crap. And that's what, that's what COVID has caused in, in the workforce. So, uh, what I'm saying is, a lot of these truck washes are pretty unreliable, uh, got unreliable help because it's, it's basic bottom entry, uh, just bottom entry level skills i mean and you know it's just uh it's what it is you know and some of these guys i mean i'm not saying that they're all bad guys dumb or anything like that you know i mean like i've had some nice guys wash me at truck wash and then i've had some dirt bags too so but what i'm saying is uh a lot of times you go to you get an empty and you're like well i don't like that washout right there i'm gonna go to this other washout because it's closer or I think there's going to be less of a line. And what you end up doing is you go to an unreliable one and like, you know, they tell you, you know, their hours are till seven o'clock at night or five o'clock at night. And then you show up there at two 30 in the afternoon and everybody's gone home, you know, and that's, uh, there are a lot, a lot of truck washes, a lot of, a lot of smaller truck washes that are notorious for that. And, uh, so anyway, uh, we're here at exit seven. TWA truck wash these these folks are pretty good I've, I've been washed here a few times uh, back through the years and right across the street from the chaotic flying J here so we're just gonna get washed out go to South Louisiana they uh, next week's Thanksgiving and they need some rice bran up there they need to make sure it's there early in the week and uh, so they won't uh, they're paying us extra money to bounce down to South Louisiana and get that rice brand taken up here to Ohio. So, all right, I'm going to pull up. Looks like I'm fixed to pull up and, uh, yeah, it looks like this guy's fixing to pull up. I'm going to pull up and go in there and tell him I need a wash out. They got a chrome shop here. I'm going to go check it out too. All right. All right. We made it here. We're going to get us a little shut eye. I am fixing to get up on I don't know if you guys like this stuff or not, but like, let me turn this off. Okay, all right, here we go. Oh, uh, Borden chocolate milk, I always love that, but uh, I usually like getting like Little Debbie donut sticks sometimes when I'm just like, I really want to sleep good at night. I'll get some of these Little Debbie donut sticks and some of that chocolate milk, but they didn't have any Little Debbie donut sticks, so, uh, this this marble cake is made by Bon Appetit. Oh, uh, I think they're out of California or somewhere, but they're like they're always in the gas station. Y'all probably seen this, but this marble cake's pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah, I just want to make sure I sleep good tonight. I just drank a little coffee earlier to kind of. I didn't have any caffeine today, so uh, after I ate supper, I was like, man, I want some coffee. And then they had community coffee at this truck stop. So, you know, I want to get some community. And now I want to make sure I get some good rest. So uh, it's uh, marble cake and chocolate milk. Come on back. All right. I'm going to bed and uh, get this mess started in the morning.